Welcome everyone to the season three premiere of Empire of the Gulf. Uh, cool. The Gulf. Cool. So, Go Bears. Oh man, we're so together. I love this. I'm gonna miss you all so much. <laughs> what do you wait? What's the threatening us? <laughs> Tonight we die. <laughs> In heck. <laughs> the heck with you all. Uh, no, hopefully all of your characters survive because, yeah, things are about to get really, really real. And as a reminder, this is a horror stream that is based off Cobalt Press's Empire of the Ghouls. And oh, ghouls. <laughs> uh, so you tonight you can expect themes of madness and, of course, of body horror, as I am a um, avid gorehound, if you haven't guessed. <laughs> Um, and yeah, with that, yeah, I think that's, I think that's everything. With that, I will be your storyteller this evening, Sage. And I'll be the Willy Boo at the Willy Boo, fun posting online and having a good time. Bringing for you, kind viewers, one Luvon Cromorak, once a vampire, now a lion, uh, about to punch a dragon. That's where we're at tonight. <laughs> You're totally muted. <laughs> um, yep, that, there we I are. Did it the wrong way. Hi, I'm Rihanna, a DIY ferret on like everything, and I will be playing as usual Six Killer, who is a large paladin Kenku, who's also going to punch a dragon. I'm at um. I'll be playing Valka Ilfred as well as uh, Agfa, a uh, weird raven familiar. I don't know how much dragon punching I'm going to be doing. I mean, yeah, I do punch things, but dragons kind of asking for it. But uh, I guess we'll we'll see. Hi, I'm uh, Jen Vaughn, and I'll be playing Maramon, the Shade Orc Bard. And I'm, I mean, punching sounds fine, but like, what about kissing? You know, I'm all about some, you know, uh, maybe maybe like a nice meal. You know, entropy, dragons love spaghetti. Uh, I feel like there's something there um, and we could investigate it together. Who knows? Who knows? Or punch, you know, that's fine too. Is that your opening move? <laughs> plate of, plate of, uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> please, sir, will you dust my wets? Yeah, and I just hold up the, yeah. Thanks out. We'll see how that goes. <laughs> Well, before we dive into potentially punch or proffer dragons, plates of spaghetti, tell us <laughs> what the heck happened last time. Let's see. Hold on. We we left the shield maidens at this oh. point. Okay. Yeah, that was or... uh, that was where you started off is basically saying like night or thanks for everything, y'all. All right, so the meeting up with uh, the spirits was before in the previous episode. All right, I'm, I'm getting my bearings straight here. Yeah, last last episode we were going to like a deep, dark forest with like cursed grass, and we were surrounded by ghosts. Uh, I think they were dwarf ghosts, is that correct? Mm-hmm. And they had, there was something weird about them too i think it was something with the eyes maybe they have no eyes remember. that's right they have no eyes it's kind of weird to not have no eyes well to have no eyes to not have no eyes would be normal anyways they were kind of surrounding us uh and saying weird stuff and it was pretty spooky to be perfectly honest that's about where I remember us leaving off. I mean, we're trying to get to, is it correct? We're trying to get to the Temple of Midnight mm -hmm. to, to destroy the uh, Lux Atelium. Yeah. Yes, indeed. You have been informed through a variety of sources that, for one, the Temple of Midnight, no chance. <laughs> the Temple of Midnight is the location where the wedding, uh, the wedding is said to take place between the avatars of Morena and... Uh, Vard saying <clears throat> to unite the Empire of Vampires and, em and the Empire of the Ghouls uh, in unholy matrimony. This is also the place where the Luxatilium is said to be, which the 
uh, Celestial's cadence and melody had informed Maramorn that this is where uh, this is where their power of of being Celestials is being drawn to, of what's being siphoned to fuel. But for what purpose, they were unsure. And so you all pretty much, uh, with the favor that you had garnered by celebrating and uh, participating in the festivities with the Shield Maidens, you had petitioned the Valkyries, be like, yo, can you give us a ride? Because <laughs> that will take us a lot less time. And so basically... Uh, they gave you, like, a four-hour flight uh, to uh, as close as they could, which is at the top of this mountain range, uh, where uh, this mountain in particular is not only covered with uh, with the snow that you would expect of wintertime, but with ash, as this is the home of a long-dead volcano who has been, from above, you can see, was carved out uh, to create uh, this ancient dwarven tag that is nestled in this now cold caldera. And so you all descended. They got you as close as they could because they are positively forbidden from entering into this area. Um, and as you all entered into the forest, you could easily see why. It was just uh, absolutely suffused with necrotic energy. And so you began your... Uh, quite a few mile trek through this cursed forest where you continue to see these dwarves, these undead dwarves, just shuffling about holding these remnants of their past of toys and tools, clutching on to what they could barely remember uh, of their lives. And at first it had started off as just like murmuring and mumbling and like like they had marbles in their mouth, but you could tell that they were trying to communicate but were unable and as you all spent the next few days sort of camping and traveling through this forest to the heart where you know that the temple is, <clears throat> they eventually were able to summon words and they began to speak this litany of magical, of mundane stories of their lives. And that is where you all are starting now. Uh, it's the morning and you all have just packed up your camp. Marimorn is feeling <laughs> a little stressed out. You're doing uh, that. There's a there's a term for it, but when you're like hypothermic, but you feel like you're really hot, uh, Maramor was cutting the pant the legs of her tuxedo pants into shorts and was like turning her top into a crop top and was just like sweating <laughs> profusely. Uh, Valka was like, f- it's like- uh, it's hot body summer. <laughs> it's hot hot girl summer over here. <laughs> yeah, hot girl summer. <laughs> yes. Hot girl shit. Hot, like- hot ghost summer. <laughs> Hot go, hot go summer. Go. I love it. Hot ghoul summer. Hot ghoul summer. Wow. And uh, Valka was just like furiously chewing at the cuticles on his nails until basically all of his fingers were bleeding. But Luvon and Six Killer were able to keep it together. But after hearing this recitation by all of these hundreds of dwarves who have just completely surrounded you, I need you all to make uh, charisma saving throws. Um, Marimorn and Valka, you have them at disadvantage since you are already suffering some stress. Oh, good. Good. Because the first one that I rolled was much lower. (laughs) Thanks so much. I got an eight. (laughs) I got a six. It's a what roll? A charisma saving throw. Oh, charisma. I'm sorry. I thought you said constitution. I'm sorry. When well, did that, that happen? I'm a bard, so 15. Guy Fieri has blessed me this evening with an 11. <laughs> I got a 17. I don't know when I got so much charisma. This seems wrong. You are a paladin. Paladins are based on charisma. Wow. Mm. That's weird. <laughs> I would shine. think it was strength. But unfortunately, I mean, yeah, it's like they're, it's like what all their magical abilities are based off of. Um, but Wow. I'm so popular, my god loves me. <laughs> I'm so popular. It's crazy. That's how I get all these powers. These powers. Did you I mean, did you say sense. that out loud? <laughs> what? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, no. So, <laughs> unfortunately for all of you, that is not quite enough to succeed. A as 17? You... Mm. Ooh. It's a rough one. It's a rough one. As you all are immediately overcome by this 
overwhelming sensation of being just these stories being shouted at you ceaselessly. Oh. And the corners of your vision start to soften and go dark. And it seems for, and it begins to feel like you are alone with these. Uh, with all of these dwarves, like as if you've completely lost sight of your companions, as your surroundings begin to fade away, and you are confronted with darkness and hundreds of these dwarves. Luvon. You've definitely been feeling tense as you've been traveling through this forest. Not sure how to cope with all of these uh, dwarves at, at first. How are you... How's Luvon feeling now? Feeling particularly isolated with them? I thought we had it under control before, but... This, this can't be good. Um, uh, do they look like they're approaching? Are they changing their aggression at all? Or is it just me and them at this point? Right now, it's just you and them, but it does feel as if they are pressing in on you, not in necessarily a hostile way, but certainly crowding you. And as their their faces and their voices begin to change, their faces begin to shift into the, the faces of your friends. You see the face of Penelope. You see the face of your father. You see the face of people who you've loved and you've lost and you've hurt. And you hear a familiar voice begin to emanate from each of these dwarves. Luvon. Luvon, look at you. You're just a predator, aren't you? have been and always will be nothing more than festering hunger and never satisfied it's funny how dying didn't even stop you from being a predator all you do is endanger those around you and you know deep down you'll turn on them one day their blood's the only thing that'll let you finally feel satiation isn't it there's still time there's still time no there isn't there never was enough time for you now, keep myself together. You've uh, done very poorly at that so far. What does Luvon do in this moment? Very much, Luvon wants to kind of push these dwarves away but is hearing the voice in like trying so hard to restrain himself that he's almost petrified in the moment. I don't think he can even move. He's just looking around and waiting for the first thing to bite at him. So he has a reason to bite back. Uh, it's overwhelming. And it's almost like the bloodlust never did go away. Now did it? Nothing's changed. Of course nothing's changed. Great. Six killer. A similar thing begins to happen. But you see instead the faces of these dwarves shift to be your fallen comrades who you failed, who died under your command you also hear a familiar voice it's strange really how tall someone can be yet their devotion can be so shallow at the same time you cling to morality and justify your bloodlust but you lack faith you do what you're told because you failed at being a leader you know you're unworthy of power aren't you um six killer is gonna speak in auron so um uh, that's cute. That's real cute. Telling me something I already know. 
My death, if that's what you're expecting, would mean nothing. I'd fail at another thing, sure. But I have a chance now to continue doing good. And even if my faith is shallow, even if I don't really believe in all of this, at least I'm doing good now. Are you? Well, you're trying to stop me, so I have to be on some sort of path. That's cute. Thanks. Fairmorn. As you're beginning to stumble, continuing to stumble, stumble around in the snow, the faces of the dwarves shift into the faces of those who you've prepared for death, for people who you've buried multiple in a grave, who you've cremated together to cut corners. You see the faces of the grieving families who felt assured in your good services. And you hear a voice. Maramorn, Maramorn, Maramorn. You don't really care about those who died, did you? <laughs> no. All you really care about is advancing your brand. You don't want to return to life. Then you'll know you'll have to confront the true death, the true judgment, and you'll be found wanting. Mom, is that you? <laughs> this is a grave insult to your own mother, but it'll get you no further. I know what I did was wrong. I'm not I'm not an idiot just because I um like to, you know, flounce around and uh offer three for one discounts, but people don't actually know they're burning three for one, so it's and yet you keep doing it. Well, it's not like I'm really doing... I'm not at the funeral home right now. I'm not doing anything. Helping these people. Are you? Are you just leaving them to somewhere that you could advance your brand even further? Huh. Thanks for the food for thought, actually. I'll think about it. Also, um, you sound very familiar. <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> oh, okay. It's a lot of, I hear a lot of voices, I'm not gonna lie. A lot of spirits, so I'm actually, is this happening to everyone else? Because this is, I mean... No, it's just you. You're the only one that deserves this. Okay, that sounds right again. Yeah, again, I hear a lot of voices, so it's not necessary. <laughs> but yeah, um, really cutting. Uh, do you watch me all the time? No, that would be incredibly boring. But yeah, no, to and root, and like a, like... A total, like, uh, well, you know, this. Fine, yes. Oh, you got me, all right? Good, get mad. Is about the temperature, too? Like, stay it's... mad. Why do you want me to be mad? Why, indeed. And Falca. What is it? How is it that these faces change and shift? And how, what is it that Valka hears? I think what's worse is that first there's people there and then there's no one there and it's just blackness. And he's like breathing hard and he's like holding the hat down like really hard. Like, no, 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 no. I, I can't be here again. I can't be here again. This isn't good. This isn't good. This isn't good. This isn't good. And then a voice from the dark. <laughs> Valka, you've managed to fail upwards the entire way. It's almost impressive how someone so incompetent can be when they're allowed to be, when they, allow, when they rely on other people for their success. Look around you, they aren't your friends. They're just here putting up with you because you make them look better by comparison. Yeah, it's true. They do look better by comparison. That's right. Everyone looks better by comparison. You're never going to get to what you want. You're never going to be a detective like you want. And the encroaching darkness is going to get you just like it did before. Just like before. 
and Belk is just like pulling the hat down like as hard as he can and like in a ball on the floor and you can hear gentle sobbing. And Marimor, or not Marimor, sorry, Six Killer. Suddenly the darkness begins to recede and everything becomes to fade back to normal. You find yourself lying on the ground uh, with several of these dwarven zombies hovering over you, looking, peering curiously, though lacking eyes, at you. And as you look around, you can see about ten feet away from you, in all directions, you see these big spheres of darkness. One for each of your companions, who you can vaguely see on the inside. Mm. Hey, do I see Agfa? You do not. Hmm. Um, a sex killer is going to try to stand up and say, like, moving, yes? Moving, please? Do the dwarves move? Uh, they'll kind of, like, step and move with you, but they... Yeah, no, they're a little... They're a little preoccupied in self right now. They're still mumbling about all these different memories that they've had. That's kind Mm. of shushed to a a whisper. Hmm. Yes, yes. Uh, she's gonna look at the orbs. They seem, like, magical or, like, physical? They they seem magical. Hmm. She's gonna throw a rock at it. A rock passes through and inside. It just stays inside? What does it hit? Does it hit anything? Or it just stays inside, right? If, like, you can, if you want to try it in, like, and toss it at uh, one of your companions, or okay, if you just want to, like, hit the ground. <laughs> um, no, I mean, she doesn't, like, she doesn't freaking like, hurl an <laughs> opening game, like, freaking Fastball. <laughs> fastball. <laughs> no. Um, she's gonna take another rock, and she's gonna go over, and she's gonna, like, gently, like, drop it on who's closest to her. Uh, we'll say Marimorn. Okay, Marimorn. She's gonna just see what the rock does. Does it go through Marimorn? Or does it just stay on Marimorn? No, it just, like, yeah, planks on her. Hmm. Okay, a quick look around. Is there anything else other than these dwarves and my friends who are stuck in giant magic prisons? No, I mean, the trees, but the forest, but that's it. Hmm. 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 God! Will my God answer me? There, there is no god here. <laughs> right. hmm. 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 At least not the one that you would like to contact. Yeah. Hmm. No god. Ah. Hmm. Ah. Uh, 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 six killer. Six killer do dumb thing. And she's going to take her hand and try and touch Marimorn. Yeah, and that's, you, you kind of have to step through because it's like a five-foot radius around all of them. So you can mm-hmm. kind of step through, and you are introduced into Marimorn's sort of sphere, and you see what she had seen of all of these individuals who were sort of clawing out to her and whispering the names of their dead loved ones. Um, and you see Marimorn talking to a voice in the darkness. Mm. Mm. Mar- Marimorn! Marimorn! And Marimorn, you do see Six Killer. Uh, you're... You're still alive. Yes, you are here. There's, I mean, sorry, I'm just talking to all these dead people. Are you... Hmm? Are you Are you getting dressed down too? Is somebody like, you know... Ah, uh, ah, uh, yes. Ominous voice saying bad things. I mean, bad things yeah, said. Yeah, definitely not true things. Um, no, uh, no. Yeah. Yeah. No, um, true. True things said. Bad oh. things, but true. Okay. Yeah. Um. Mm-hmm. Ominous voice say lie. Say lie to you, Marimar. Uh, uh, I mean, what can you hear? I mean, we sh- can we get out of here? Actually? She's gonna. She's gonna turn her <laughs> bird head and like, like focus in. Say, um, voice voice saying lies. No, the bo- voice and I see differently. Um. Mm. Uh, mm, not not psychologically, but um, not spiritually. Oh, uh, just you know, I have a different view of the human body than most people. You know, just, just hotels. 
people check out who cares you know mm. souls what matters mm. or what, what the spark i i know i know we have, we have different points of view so yes yes uh ominous voice speaking still is it yeah yeah what's mm. up Mm. Same same voice speak six killer. Yes. Mm. How how six killer get out? Maramore not get. Maramore is very weak. All right. Hmm. Unkind. Unkind. But not untrue. You mean oh. physically or spiritually or some. Uh terrible place all of the above oh cool thanks okay yep. that's right unfair um all right i <laughs> Maribor's gonna try to speak in um i mean pretty sure i know what this is but celestial to this person to this thing mm -hmm. um which i assume looks very cool to a uh, six killer sort of like a uh, uh Marimor opens her mouth and like uh like this little galaxy fog sort of comes out and shimmers and like a. Uh, the words have like their own orbit around the Maramorn's head um, oh, until they dissipate. Hmm. Uh, and she's gonna say, fuck off. <laughs> Leave six killer alone. No. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, what, is, uh, there some, is there something you want from me? Do you want me to admit, yes. I've already admitted I'm a baddie. Uh, I'm uh, sure. Why I'm... are you a baddie? Why? Why? You you already said it. Cause I'm weak. Cause I'm flawed. So I'm not perfect. Um, cause I'm, cause I'm lazy. Keep going. Jesus. Uh, this... I mean, who? Uh, so, yeah, yeah. I assume six killer can hear me now speaking in common again. <laughs> this sound like arguments between children. Six killer and children. Hmm. And with I... and with Maramorn's admission, the sphere begins to break and dissipate. And you see two spheres that are left. Mm. I mm. did it. It was the L word, not love, the other one. <laughs> mm. Mm. Alright, who should who do you want to help? I'll try it. I can I can or should we go together or uh want go want go together safer okay yeah okay who's who's nearest uh the next closest would be luvon okay we will go to luvon okay we step in holding hands sure <laughs> luvon just imagining like six killers giant like clawed terrible hand and there one's little dainty purple one <laughs> I mean, not like tiny. No, but <laughs> comparison to like giant evil bird hand. I mean, they're like they're like true. working hands, like <laughs> working bird hands. Working bird hands. Luvon. Luvon having bad time. Yes. These people will get hurt. Yeah. It, 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 um, yes. It's okay. It's we. That's why we're here. Friends will help you. That's right hurt you by getting hurt by you. Alright. Can we hear this too? Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm, so, I mean, six killer hurt back. Six yeah. killer get hurt. I mean, we all, again, oh, we... Lupin got hurt by our inaction. Mm, yes. Indeed. Your inaction. Oh, oh no, yes, don't true. make this spear about us. Um. <laughs> yes, get out of spear. We out spear. Yeah, um, this is um, my spear. Uh, Maramorn, uh, like, uh, puts, uh, her hands on Luvon's shoulders and, like, sort of, like, tries to get, like, catch his eyes, like, okay, Luvon, you have to, um, admit the thing that is paining you the most. That's sort of, um, how, the key to unlocking this door for this room. It's, it's okay, we, we're not gonna judge you. It's okay, oh, we are going to. Jeez. <laughs> if, if... Judge, judge that being human. How human am I really anymore? Well, human broad term. 
Yeah, I mean, more like we're all humanoids, right? Like, I guess. human of, of humans to name anything bipedal humanoid. Mm, mm, jealous. Jealousy, I hear. Jealousy. Yeah, it sounds like this gaseous fog is jealous of your bipedalism. So, um, what else can bipeds do that a gas can't? Can't you can fart, but they can too. So, um, mm. not all was... not all gas do fart. Yeah, mad, all... mad farting. Yeah. <laughs> oh, they all the fart too. So trying to neg this uh, sphere to go away, but I don't think that's gonna work. Yes. Uh, Blue on now, furry one. Just, just take time. Lots, lots changes. Lots changes, but still move on. Marimon like points at his chest, in there, in his head, in there. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Body change, but still heart. Mm-hmm. Six killers see this. Luvon takes an unsteady, deep breath, closes his eyes. As time goes on and my nature progressed, I've felt I was losing myself, watching myself become more and more of a bloodthirsty monster. And part of me thought I could change that, that there is still time to change that but the more time i spend ignoring who i am the more time i waste the more things i have happened to my body i don't want to hurt any more people who are close to me or who might suffer the same fate as me. But I can't deny that that won't happen anymore. And the sphere begins to dissipate around you, and you see one last lone one standing. Mm. Valka, gray one, we help now. Good, good job, Luvon. There's no time to waste. <laughs> right. We all step in holding hands. Yeah. You know, it's just a hat, like, really low to the ground, like, holding it. Aww. Aww. Let me roll something. Oh, it's a nat 20. A nat 20 on baby. <laughs> um, Six killer looks at this and says, oh, oh. Oh, poor, poor Valka. And she's gonna pick him up like a baby. <laughs> He's like limp and like his face is very wet and probably slightly puffy from tears. Oh, yeah, she's gonna Ooh. hold him like a baby boy. He just like looks up at you, hat like dangling mm-hmm. off, with these like very glossy eyes just like looking up at you like. He has no idea what's right anymore, and he just wants to be, like, anywhere else. Mm. Falka, Grey One. Six killer, sorry this happened. Six killer, sorry. It's okay, I I deserved it. No. No. This fear wrong. This fear very wrong. It's definitely right. I'm just, I'm just pulling you all down here with me. Mm. No. This fear need more talk. Need more talk. Uh, this fear run by uh, coward. No response. Mm. Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm. This fear run by by voice. Very small, very small voice. 
not able to speak what bothers. But Valka, good. Valka, good. Friends not be here. Valka, not good. Are we, are we really friends? Is it really okay for me to have friends? Are you Move on. Oh, sorry. Oh. <laughs> Frozen for a second. I'm like, Frozen for <laughs> more? Like, <laughs> sorry. Are you asking us if it's okay to be friends? With me. Yeah. Y- yeah. Is it okay if you're our friend? I mean, I guess both. I mean, that's how that's how friends work. like. You know, we're there for each other. It's a two way street. Um. Yeah, of course we're friends. We know what he, like. We know each other's terrible backstories. Some worse than others. Um, we try to make each other's days and uh, make them a little brighter. We um, uh, when we're trying to. Uh, solve things together it's like we're doing it to like impress the other person like you know sometimes that's um that's you know friends we're in a, we're we creatively problem solve together including if someone's feeling low yeah i, I should i should be better to you all i i haven't been a hundred percent honest with you i'm not a detective like at all uh. I don't know what the hell I'm doing. You mean the shadow fell? Terrible hellhole that it is doesn't have a detective agency. Hmm. No, nah, that's probably why so much crime gets away. <laughs> As a matter of fact. I mean, I don't. Do you need like an official initiation ceremony? Because you you're doing the things a detective does. You're following clues. A six killer will pat Valka's back and be like, win all over. Uh, get license. Yes. Help get license. <gasps> oh, they have those? I thought P- that was Take like... a PI test. <laughs> I'm really good at tests. Like, really good at studying and tests. Uh, yes. Perfect. Can I have, like, a shiny badge or something like that? Oh, it, it, it was so shiny. That would be so good. Only the shiniest. And you know who's going to make that badge for you? Your three friends. <laughs> we get together and design it together. So if there's something you really want on it, you should probably let us know. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds amazing. Yeah. We got to workshop this badge soon. I don't want to I don't want to have this idea yes. leave me. Yes. After after leave spear. After leave spear. After after leave Spear! And with that, <laughs> <laughs> the last one begins to dissipate. And you all find yourselves again amidst the forest. Mm-hmm. And amidst the dwarves. Who now. Where the, where the fuck is Agfa? You don't see Agfa. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, uh, Maramoyne's looking around the trees and like, uh, can we see cloud cover at all? Or just trying to discern if there's some sort of, um, I don't know, low lying, like dick fog or something. <laughs> like, <laughs> fog. <laughs> dick fog. <laughs> you know, what like, the fuck is dick fog? <laughs> walk into it and it treats you and it's a dick to you. Like, we just went oh. through, you know, oh. like, that is yeah, yeah. what I thought. This is a horror game. You can't say words like dick. So yeah, there is there is definitely this sort of uh, very cloudy morning, um, in yeah, in this mist that rolls through the f- this forest. Yeah, Marymore just kind of goes, mm-hmm. We'll see. Agfa. Ag Agfa. Mm, uh, I'm sure that's fine. He usually <laughs> comes and goes as he pleases. Hmm. Mm. Valka Valka want down. No need. But Valka went down, Six Killer says, still uh, holding you like a child. He kind of like leans into your chest a little bit. It's just a little bit longer. Mm, mm. Thank you. Yeah, Six Killer, Six Killer will carry this tiny man around. Hell yeah. 
<laughs> until <laughs> until I have to put you down. I mean, I very much imagined like six killers, like whatever. Yay high, and Valkyrie's mm-hmm. like here. <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. he's not mm-hmm. he's not super tall, and he's like super thin too. So <laughs> the difference between five ten and five eleven. <laughs> I like, yeah, you're right. I like that Cat has to write duck fog because they can't say dick <laughs> fog. <laughs> Thanks, Chat. It's a gift. It is terrifying, isn't it? I was legitimately upset for a second. I, again, I'm sorry. It. I didn't think about the fact it was a no, horror game. No, it's a game. horror. It's a horror yeah. game. I mean, yeah. You can't say things like that. <laughs> and so, do you all continue onward? How is it that you continue onward? Carrying a man. At an accelerated pace. <laughs> yeah, carrying a man at an accelerated pace. <laughs> Put that on my freaking Twitter bio. <laughs> uh, are the uh, are the dwarves following us or um, they are so closely? Okay. Do you see that now? There are roughly a thousand of them. Jeez. And they're slowly um. becoming louder and louder as you all have reestablished yourself. Hmm. It's kind of like a nice break, though, right? Just one voice instead of thou- hundreds of hundreds. One really rude, crystal clear voice. Mm. I'm not sure I needed the reminder. Every like now and then. I'm oh, sorry. Every now and oh. then you hear individually, just like at the edge of your perception, you swear you hear Agfa's voice repeating something that you heard within that sphere. Mm. But so. it- I I I swear there's some very old weather uh, happening like uh, all right so <laughs> um six killer is going to say an arun to the wind oh, go fuck yourself you dickless eyeless wonder <laughs> The wind does not reply. (laughs) Shithead. (laughs) Never liked that guy. Also, Matthew. All my homies hate Agfa. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Matthew, feel free to throw up that X card if this feels too directed at you. (laughs) No, it is not at you. Uh, I I know, no, no. Yeah. You're right. It is hate Agfa. All my homies hate Agfa. (laughs) (laughs) And so you all continue on at an accelerated pace, carrying a man <laughs> to the edge of the forest, where you see. Oh, actually, I have a little graphic that if y'all are, if y'all are watching on Twitch, you can see. Ba-pow! You see basically what looks like this. It's this bowl-shaped uh, tig uh, of dwarven construction that it looks to be thousands upon thousands of years old, mostly decrepit. Uh, Most of these buildings have fallen apart, have been lost to time. And you see mostly the remains of shambles of buildings uh, um, that's left. But at the base of this sort of bowl, you see one perfect, beautiful temple that is made, um, that uh, that is made completely out of uh, obsidian, whose tiles uh like the roofing tiles appeared to be made made out of like black dragon scales and there's a sort of four tier structure to the city where at the top tier you can see are seven of these large beacons um that appear right now inert but they are two large pieces of black stone and at the top you see the sort of big purple crystal and working furiously in this uh, in this decrepit tig, you see a dragon. A dragon unlike anything that you have seen in books or imagined in your mind. You see this body of constellation of arcane lights that's contrasted by void made manifest. You see this huge dragon furiously working on this building and it turns to you 
you see this large black maw of true abyss turn its focus. And as the forest breaks, all of the dwarves do not step a single foot past the tree line. You see <clears throat> that um, all of them yeah, stand at this edge with their empty eyes staring with a sense of yearning at their lost home. And their eyes begin to open. And from them, from their stories, from their whispers, from their shouts, you see the sort of gray light leave each of their mouths and begin to descend and float towards this dragon who absorbs them. And after it absorbs this thousand and one lights, the last one coming from a stop motion raven fluttering against the backdrop of a gray sky, you see Simroth. The revoiced one. <laughs> and it calls to you, Valka, with great familiarity. There he is. I knew he wouldn't be too far. H Agfa, uh, Agfa, I. Uh, what are, what are we doing? Are we coming in? Are you all? Yeah. I think so, but Marimor puts her hand on Valka's shoulder and goes, I don't think his real name's Agfa. Or oh, um, he's, he's not going to be Agfa for much longer. Six killers still stand by words. Yes. Six killer not recant. Apologies. Yeah, are, mm. is Ravka still in my arms? I guess yeah. we're still in my arms. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, I, w I wasn't recanting my apology. I was just saying... <laughs> Oh no, uh, Six Killer was talking about um, when she called him a dickless eyeless wonder and oh, fuck okay. himself. <laughs> standing by that. Yeah, right, right, right. Okay. I'm standing by it. Sorry. Amazing. Sorry, not sorry. Well, um, shall we go see Simroth or are we going to wait for. Move um, on, you look pensive. Hey. Uh, walking in then. Yes? Yes. And now the dwarves remain completely silent, though you see their mouths still moving as they continue reciting memories that no one will ever hear again. And you begin picking your way through the rubble. And as you pass by one of these beacons, you can see that there are sort of arcane carvings, but Valka you notice a familiar script, your witch's script. And as you come to the first one, uh, you see that there are runes on it uh, that grant the uh, this area, this entire area, immunity from divination magic. Uh, Velka will like gesture over to it and like have six killer walk over there and be like, look, it says, um, I guess you can't read that. Uh, uh, Marimoy, can you detect magic? Can you do, like, a detect magic kind of thing? Uh, yes, yes. And, um, she, uh, like, uh, pulls out her little kalimba and she goes, ah, 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 and then waits to hear her own voice, like, sung back to her as she casts detect magic. And as you mm. do, you can then see the witch's script that has been written here. Actually. Oh. Yeah. Oh, you cannot. I'm a lie. I'm a liar. I'm sorry. This is different. <laughs> which is script? 
This uh, is like... As you tried to reach it's cool. out. It's just a spell slot. Right. <laughs> if, you would like to, if you would like to do it as a ritual, that's fine. Um, uh, but as you, as you do so and you reach out in this very familiar way, in a way that you know would work under normal circumstances, your magic just falls flat. Uh, you don't, it absorbs your magic almost. So you don't even hear the echo back of your voice. Oh, that makes sense, actually. It says it says divination magic doesn't work here. Uh, so I guess that, that makes sense why you wouldn't be able to do that. That's wicked clever to put it in a script that other people can only see with detect magic. Very clever indeed. Someone's really smart around here. Hmm. How far away are we from the dragon? Let me do a quick math. Uh, about 300 feet. Uh, oh, well, where, where are they doing? Um, they are basically... Um, so surrounding this temple is this large orrery, which you had been, which was described to you above the mm-hmm. Lexatilium. Uh, and you see that they are fiddling with different parts of it. And you can see that they're aligning different things on this orrery that's surrounding the Midnight Temple. Ah, uh, they're just ignoring us. For the moment. Okay. So what's a, a, a game plan here? Never I mean, punched a dragon before. Mm, yes. I mean, we can always ask it to, um, you know, free the dwarves and disperse itself. Huh? Yeah. Step one. Yeah, I, I could try that. Uh, most of the time, uh, I get a no, but we can try that. Valka, how many dragon ask disperse self and stop hunting dwarves? Uh, well, none so far, but generally I hear no or get away from me. Ah, uh, ah, uh, just general questions, huh? Yeah. Uh, well, um, burn, burn bridges later, yes. <laughs> I don't see any bridges. Mm. <laughs> Expression. Maliform. Oh. No, oh, I see. Do we do we want to ask though? I mean, maybe someone else should ask if if we're gonna do that. I feel as though the dragon won't relent. The only thing we'll get out of this individual is their intentions. Important, important. No. Important. Otherwise, it's just going to be a fight. Mm-hmm. Mm. All right. Well, how about half of us ask and the other half prepare? Mm. Only up. only three hundred feet away. Probably hearing. Probably hearing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good point. Good point. Yes. Uh, <laughs> just have just drop the eye contact. In- introduce. <laughs> just just introduce first. Yes. I mean, yeah, right. we we can do that. Uh, <clears throat> Hello. Uh, <laughs> Matt, do you want to do the voice or should I? Uh, you do it just so uh, you know what is actually going to be said first, and then I don't have to like parrot it. There we go. Imagine yeah. this in my Agfa voice. I'll get you to record it and I'll insert it later for the Patreon okay. track. There we go. Wow, fancy. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Hello. Oh, did, oh, I probably said it too quietly. Uh, yes. Oh, oh sorry. Just <laughs> 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 like, <it's, it's> saying <laughs> Um. Hello. Yes, this one's speaking. Uh how doing? This one's six killer. I know. I've been traveling uh, with you all since you all have been 
with Valka, who ah. showed here, up here, without the Necropedia. A continual failure ah. on your part. Yeah, I totally fucking forgot that. Ah, what was I ah. thinking? Six Killer just making sure, just making sure. Um, uh, what fuck? Yeah! Yeah, Agfa. <laughs> well, I've noticed all of your behaviors and all of our time traveling together, and well, you know, I just didn't think you were good enough mm. to travel mm. with my dear Valka. I know but you not... all. I know you all will leave him in the end. Unlike large dragon, not leave Velka. No, I am beyond time. We can be together forever. It's true. We're best friends forever. It's true. Yes. Okay. From like Do the you... very start. <laughs> That's right. But you didn't know him as Simroth. Uh, no. No, I didn't know that. That's new. Yeah, yeah. Isn't it weird we do that he keep secrets from each other. It's, he yeah, keeps it's... most secrets, and I keep almost none. That's fair. Okay, well, first of all, um, there's that thing funny. called balance. Yeah. Um, But second of all, don't you think this one's sort of like a big secret? It's not like, oh, I love your broccoli salad. I really hate it, but um, you put so much time into it. Um, I mean, no, not really. Most of the time, Agatha tells me that he's keeping me secret secrets from me because it's good for me. Ah, ah. Uh, uh, Valka, Valka, uh, mm -hmm. Six Killer talked to you one day about first marriage. First marriage, very similar. First marriage, divorce. Oh. Yes, yes. Important. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm into stories. That'd be really nice to hear. Yes, yes. Uh, not Agfa, Agfa. <laughs> you may call me Agfa if you wish. Well, no, no, Six Killer, say whatever not Agfa want name is six killer not rude okay what what name well simroth is the one i've had probably the longest mm. simroth simroth uh simroth large one um just want necropedia why what do? It contains a ritual that I need to perform. Do what? To bring darkness to all mm. the mortal plane. Mm. See, that's a really good secret. He didn't tell me that one. Ah, yes. Um, n not good? No. No, not 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 good. Uh, I've got a question. Matter. Yes. Um, do you care for Valka? I care very deeply. I would only mm. trust someone who I cared for with such an important and monumental task. See, but, but then you let him disappoint you, so you made him feel bad. No, no, no. I'm. I disappoint just because I'm a bad person. No, no, no. This this bad person. This no, bad person. Yeah, I'm, I'm getting to a point here, Valka. It's it's oh, fine. Uh, just I'm keep listening. Keep listening. Become Eyes better. unclouded. Okay, so um, when did you first meet Valka again? It was a long time ago for Valka. It was at a time when he felt sad and desperate, and lonely, and isolated, and unloved, and I came to him, offering companionship. Came and Valka still feel that! Yeah, Valka like, that's still feel entire, bad! That's his entire life! Like, Changed no, nothing! I, you, no, did see, you, were you supposed to make it better? Because you failed! Oh, let's see, like, the thing is, like, as bad as, as my life is, just think how bad it was before that. 
I didn't first even marriage, that first marriage, so bad. <laughs> Val cannot see. Val cannot see this bad marriage. I mean, I don't have a ring. No, not yes, bad marriage. Same, <laughs> same. But now oh. Valka has the power. Power is bestowed on him by me. To be it's able true. to deal punch. with those who make him feel sad and alone. He and could have developed skills on his own, though. Didn't need you. Just like no, I was wicked fire bad. Hammer. Just cool. like Fire Hammer, Six Killer hate so much. We all Just need like a mentor. It's true. It's true. Bad I was kind of nothing without Agfa. I was picked on. I was uh, bad at, at Raven Queen School. Uh, Raven Queen. The office of school. <laughs> yeah. Learn, Raven, learn Queen Raven Queen School. It's like uh, it's like it's every Sunday. <laughs> mm. I I can't believe I'm gonna say this. Um, and Baron sort of looks at Six Killer, but you're not your productivity. Whoa. <laughs> That's a that's a big character development for you <laughs> to say that. Yes, yes. Um, now, Valka, listen. <laughs> listen to well, words. I mean, yeah, I'll, I'll listen to both of you. Yeah. But you were something before. You weren't nothing. This person might have made you feel like you were nothing after they got there, and that you could only succeed through their help. That's coercive control. Is it? Well, I mean, I'm going to present it to you and you can choose to believe it or not. I'm not going to make you. And that's a little bit of the difference. But I mean, did no. you, did you, did they, did you have a lot of friends growing up after you met Simroth? No, I had Yeah, they maybe... kind of kept you from everyone else. He only needs me. That's true. I that is abusive that. as hell. Oh, bad. So bad. You X too? You come be hammer? You come be fire hammer too? Sound just like fire hammer. <laughs> I mean, you make a good point, Marimon. It, it does sound kind of coercive. Coer coercive. I could barely say either. Um, <laughs> too. Uh, it's hot. it's just hot with the shadow fell accent that we all have in the shadow. <laughs> that, that everyone has in the shadow fell. Yes. Yeah, shadow um, fell. It's canon. Uh, I. Hey, wait. I got a quick question. How many how many donkeys are in the Shadowfell? There's one every two miles. <laughs> oh, that's good. All right. So it's not all hell. <laughs> <laughs> Noted. Noted. Let me. Take, I'm. I'm gonna write that down in my DM. Notes. I'm gonna take the spaghetti and meatballs. One. <laughs> I mean, we don't have them on the west coast where I am, so. Donkeys? Y'all have dun Dunkin' Donuts? Oh, Dunkin' Donuts. I was yeah, in a different donkeys. donkey entirely. I heard donkeys. Oh, no. <laughs> no, I heard, I heard donkeys meaning Dunkin' Donuts, but they're like few yeah. and far between out here. They are, really? Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, I thought America true. runs on Dunkin'. Not the West well, you know, part of it. Sonic, <laughs> Sonic commercials are national too, and they're not everywhere. So that's capitalism for you. That's yep. true. Get people, just get those brain worms in them. <laughs> Uh, Valka, we did you okay I guess is another thing I'm not trying yeah. to again compare all of us but in all of the friendships you've had with the three of us um were there times that you came to us that we made you feel better or pointed out that you did do something right and you didn't really need us or didn't really need I mean every, every time I went to you is like a, a good time mm -hmm. Like I felt like I was fitting in with a group of people for the first time, even kind of weird and, you know, monotone. Right. Uh, and and Agfa, um, did he like that? I mean, I I don't think it bothered him at first, but I did notice that every time he would tell me stories at night, he would first start off with by telling me that uh, everyone around me was gonna, you know take me away from him and so he couldn't hear the stories anymore but then he would you know he would he would tell the stories it's fine <clears throat> go 
And now I'm trying because... to pass the buck here, Luvon, but <laughs> you seem very pensive again. <laughs> and now because you all have distracted Falca from his mission, he shows up here without the one thing that I've asked for in return. It's true. I let him down. Mm, this this good. Valka, Valka see this, right? This good? Not turning world shadow? Well, I guess. Could, uh, Rihanna, could you roll me a charisma check? I'm going to get a nat Maybe. 20 like the baby roll. Yeah. <laughs> Ridiculous. Um, oh, that's a 17 plus. That's not bad. Yeah. Plus five. You know, you're you're right, Sakula. You're absolutely right. It's, huh. it's probably a good idea that I didn't bring this actual. Finally, I, I, I fucked up instead of fucking down. You didn't fuck up at all. Yeah, oh, boy, we got... <laughs> we got to get you some motivational posters for the inside of your hat. Like... <laughs> Hang in there, kid. And like, there's always a sunrise after a sunset and whatever. <laughs> like, <laughs> not in the shadow fell, but it's a good saying. <laughs> it's just nothing but sunsets all the time. Simra. But those are beautiful, honestly. I like them better. <laughs> yes. Do you still need Valka? Well, Valka is my favorite. But I do have others out there. So there are seven copies of the Necropedia. And I just need one. Wow, how did I miss every fucking one of them? <laughs> it's beyond me. I even gave you a vision. I gave Damn. You, gave you all a vision. Well, I guess it worked out then, because six kill us at right that I fucked up. Aramorn's like like holding her backpack that's lavender and in the shape of a skull. And uh is just sort of like thinking about her, <laughs> her uh beautiful, beautiful instrument she got <laughs> from uh <laughs> the god just like, is this a necropedia in disguise? <laughs> like <laughs> Whoops. I, I thought giving Come each on. of you a mission would pull you away from each other, but it seems it only brought you closer together. Well, I went and threw myself at some vampires. That really didn't work out all that well, did it? Your mother will be surprised to see your new form. <sighs> oh, listen. Well, shall we get this over with as he waves this large, sort of ephemeral claw? Mm. Mm. I mean, I guess, unless you wanted to disperse, I don't know if you thought of that. Like, what's more yes. entropastic than just, you know, like, cat piss in the wind? Yes. That's um. right. It's gross. This is a horror stream. <laughs> It's a yes. horror stream. Cat piss in the wind. It's a it's a biological weapon if I've ever heard one. Mm -hmm. Well, well, I, I have an idea. We can. Um, I'm sure it's it's here somewhere. If we all look around, we could probably find a wicca, a nicka No, 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 it's no not, not fine. We could we could find it here, and he's like winking at you all. I want to roll. Oh um, yeah. Oh, shit. Fine. Yeah, let me check uh, in my backpack. Maybe I've got it. What, what do I do to, to bluff? I haven't bluffed in this character bluff. at all. Deception. Dece uh, yeah, it what's is. sleight of eye? No. Sleight of eye. <laughs> yeah. Hey, does he still not have eyes? Eyes is a generous term. Hee <laughs> hee. <laughs> Fucking dickless shit. <laughs> So yeah, uh, I rolled a natural one. Yeah, I didn't. That's <laughs> no that's expectation. The on best that one. in character roll I've seen in a while. <laughs> that's really good. Yeah. Now we could look around. 
Mm. Wink. Mm. Um, <laughs> Six Color would put Velka down because I never <laughs> did that. <laughs> and put put a claw on your shoulder and say, Valka, gray one. Uh-huh. Yeah. All, all here going to kill. Kill that. Oh. Yes. Yes. Are we gonna uh, destroy the Luxitelium now? Uh, yes. Yes. That's the yes. appropriate move. Around about how far are we from the Luxatilium? Uh, it's right, still? yeah, 300 because the dragon is, is right next to it and it surrounds oh, okay. this uh, this temple. All right, all right, let's, let's probably do that then. Just out loud saying this. <laughs> <laughs> well, this was clearly an opportunity for you to leave, but barring that, I only have one other question. Yes. What does a timeless being need with an end goal? Oh. There is so much more you don't know. Mm. I serve forces that are beyond these petty mortal beings. Even if undead could live forever, it's not true forever. It's not beyond time. It is still trapped within it. And what my patron wants is to consume. And I do plan to give them something to feed on. They can feed on my fist. Hey, you could just said food motivated and just, you know, cut to the shit. <laughs> Let's roll some initiative! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Always in an undercut of monologue <laughs> to try to make them angry. Oh, good shit. Move on. 16. Beautiful. Whew. Valka. 14. Marimorn. 19. Nice. And six killer. 11. Eleven. Well, Marimor, you all have the first move. Um. So basically, how how this is all arranged is that there are these four main sections. Um. You are all at the top section, and then it's about a twenty foot drop. It's like a hundred feet across, and then a twenty foot drop to get to the next one. Um. It looks like this dragon is going to come up and try and meet you. So if you all want to like hold, make a plan like real quick to like hold your actions, you can all take a moment to like figure out what you want to do, but yeah. Um, so yeah, it would be about like basically 300 feet to get to try and run towards the dragon or if you all want to um, yeah. Wait, or yeah, you know. Go. Um, quick question. Yes. I can't feel Orogolon at all. Like, I can't feel my god. You still have access to your paladin powers, but okay. like, everything feels as if like like you're under like a weighted blanket like it feels so fuzzy and far away Hmm. and they're not considered a humanoid right correct fuck all right uh yeah marimorn's in favor of moving closer (laughs) yeah 300 feet kind of a far thing Although I'm sure that means then they get to like throw some shit at us. Um, bu- 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 bu. But she will, while running, <laughs> handily. Uh, and I guess uh, it looked like there were stairs or like actually, um, sorry, like uh, graduated uh, paths or ramps to each level. So we don't have to worry mm-hmm. about like, yeah, like so they're... roping down. Yeah, there you can tell that there are like bridges and like stairs and everything that you can like sort of pick over and wind down to get over the uh, the terrain. Um, yeah, she will uh, uh, she will uh, pull out uh, her fancy white gleaming light dulcimer though that she got um, from Canes and Harmony and start picking it uh, slowly, uh, or no, swiftly while uh, blum, 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 blum,
And then she'll just go, Falca! And give him a little bardic inspiration because she knows he can do it! But, uh... <laughs> so he gets 1d8 uh, for ability checks, saving throws, or attack rolls. Beautiful. And moves, I guess, only th th 30 feet. <laughs> Um, did you want to use your... I'm sorry, did you, what did you say for your action? Did you want to use your action to dash? And get, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Get a total of 60. Nice. Yeah, 60. Yeah. All right. It's cool and, math on how long it'll take me to get there. No. <laughs> and then Luvon. Luvon is running in. Um, Let's see here. And activating his Curio of Mirrors. So now there's like, let's see, how many here? Probably about, uh, do, 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 do. there are three Luvons that are just running in after this dragon at the moment. Nice. What this looks like. Well, technically four, including you. Right, four. Here we go. Yep. And it lasts until they're all gone, basically. But uh, yeah, no claws are out. We've got sort of a uh, rah, just kind of going in um, until he has an opportunity to dash. I don't think I can do it as a bonus action yet. So yeah, that's one of your muck things. Step of the wind. It's a general muck feature. Oh, I'm gonna save those key points for punching. Oh, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> um, what what is your movement as monk? You're probably crazy fast. Um, right now, thanks to mobile. I am at 40 feet. All right, so you'll be able to move in 80. Very nice. Mm-hmm. All right. 80. And Groovy. Falca. And then Six Killer following that. What's in my general vicinity? General vicinity, so, like, to the left of you, you have this huge beacon, which is about 20 feet tall, 10 feet, 10 feet in diameter, and then there is a lot of dilapidated buildings and rubble that has been kind of like pushed out of the way to make sort of a clear path for people to walk through. Perfect. Perfect. Um, so Valka is going to cast something. He takes out that silver dagger that he got. Oh, so long ago, jams it into his palm and pulls out like the slick black blood and uses it to carve a sigil in the air before slamming it down into the ground and, Around him, all sorts of little pebbles and boulders lift up in response as he casts Arcane Siege. Mm. Uh, and then after he does that, uh, one of the boulders kind of like sprouts these like fly wings and hovers close to Valka and goes, what are we doing? What are we doing? Full on assault? Full on assault? Valka goes, yeah, uh, uh, go ahead and, and fly straight towards that. And the boulder just just begins hurtling at it. Uh, it can go up to a thousand feet. And I roll a uh, attack. Nice. Oh no! It uh, it would make a dexterity saving throw, but it's an inanimate object. All right. Uh, seven. Okay. Yeah. My um. My save DC is 17. Uh, it's made of inor inorganic material, right? Stone, crystal, metal. Uh, we'll go with yes. Okay. <laughs> then it's going to deal twice as much damage as normal. Very cool. Uh, this is going to be... Uh, I'm going to need D&D &D dice for this. <laughs> this, is, this is a big one. Do, do, do. Come on. Dice. Sorry. Do, 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 do. 6d12. Ooh, very nice. Mm -hmm. Um... Alright, and so 64 damage. Respectable. Quite. Alright. It's his turn. 
Uh, you At the end of your turn, Valka, you see that after uh, taking this huge collision with this boulder, suddenly he slips out of space and time temporarily. As he Great. uses a legendary action. Oh, Six. this was against the uh, Luxatilium. Oh, okay, got it, got it. Okay, got it, yeah. actually. Sorry. Um, either way, you still see the dragon slip out of space and time. Oh, Sweet. great. Like you do. Uh, doo -doo -doo. And then six killer. Okay. So, is the Luxatillion, like, uh, would you... <clears throat> is it fully mechanical, or is it, like, would you call it evil? Is it evil? E evil? Hmm. Uh, not in a an explicit good versus evil way, but it has it is fueled by necrotic magic and so, crystals. Well, if I used thunder mm -hmm. slash lightning, yeah. or if I used radiant, what would work better? Uh, thunder. Oh, okay. Sure. All right, then. Okay. I do have my extra attack because I'm taking my attack action and I will. Where's my fucking spells? Um, I can only do Thunderous Smite at first level, so I'm going to do Thunderous Smite. That's going to take you a minute to like run over there to get over to the, uh, to the orrery. Okay. Because it's 300 feet away and you are all you're basically at zero. So, well, yeah. I, okay. Uh, will I still get to attack twice, or do I just do one then? Uh, you'll. It's gonna take you a few rounds to run over there. Um, so you'll oh. you'll have to use your action to like run over there, and then you'll be two hundred forty feet away from the actual orrery. Oh, never mind. I don't know. Uh, yeah, this it dragon would... blinked out of existence. <laughs> It'll take you a total of five rounds if you use your action to run, um, to get over to the orrery. Uh, you could do it, and I can have something that will help you once you get there. Not the meta game, haha. -ha. <laughs> um, Tactics, uh. go! I oh, know everything is frozen for me. Okay, there we go. Now I can hear people. Okay, cool. Oops. Um. Uh, did you do? All right. So, uh, what do you? Sorry, I didn't hear anything that you said. What are you doing, Rihanna? Okay. Uh, I'm just gonna start running over there then. Sounds good. Alright, so you will be at 60 feet with Marimorn. And, uh, did you still want to cast, um, your Thunderous Smite as a bonus action? On, on what? Well, because it still lasts for a minute. Um, oh, I guess I could get over there in time? Yeah, you'll you'll get over there and, and still have half of the spell left. If you want. You don't have to. Okay. Um. Yeah, no, I'll just wait then. Okay. And then, oh boy. Uh, the dragon suddenly reappears again, and it is right next to Luvon. Uh, do do do, and it is going to do, and you see, it lashes out this huge tail at you. Wow, that's a natural one. Uh, <laughs> as it completely fucking misses. Wow. I assume, a, I assume a 13 doesn't hit. Does it boop you? Sorry, a 13 will not hit. I was <laughs> muted. Oops. And then the dragon is going to take its turn. It is right there in front of you. So, Blue Vaughn. That has 
90 foot cube. All right, so that's going to get all of you. So all of you, I need you to make a dexterity saving throw for me, please. Okay, this is not a spell or an attack saving throw. Okay. Eight. Also eight. Twenty-four. All right. And six killer. Bad. Five plus, uh, like an eight. So everyone except for Luvon, you all are suddenly just swept with this uh, breath weapon that ex- that this dragon exhales over all of you. Uh, Luvon, you managed to duck out of the way just in time as this just nebula spews forth from the mouth of this creature. And you all are going to take... Um, you all are going to take... Uh, 15 radiant damage and uh, 20 fire damage. That's ah, fire. And then you all are under the effect of a levitate spell. So you all float up 20 feet. Um, you all cannot, you all have to use like things around you to propel yourself forward on your turn you can use your use your action to cause yourself to levitate up another 20 feet uh but you can't you are basically like fluttering in the air as he has used his gravitic breath not ideal don't like that (laughs) (laughs) and then marimorn NBD just just floating um and she's sort of uh feeling with her fingers all over this um oh okay so they're not all okay <laughs> um her uh this beautiful uh brilliantly glowing dulcimer um that is not a lap dulcimer it is a strumming against the chest dulcimer um has several uh I know it's been a while since we described it but it's um it's got several spells uh, and celestial runes along the side of it. <laughs> and a good chunk of them are divination ones, but I was just checking. I was just like, surely not every single one that I can't use here. Divina- be... Yeah, divination that... spells third lower, third level or lower will not, not yeah, be yeah. able but to function. That was amazing, though. If I was just like, they can't all be that, like, <laughs> that would be... <laughs> so rude! <laughs> <laughs> like... <laughs> Sorry. Um... All right, so she is floating. Uh, cool. She will. Are, there, are you say? Do you think they're like twenty feet up from the ground now, or? Mm-hmm. Oh boy. Um, doesn't want to kill anybody because that could definitely happen. Um, she looks around. And she's like, "Who? <laughs> Who needs help? <laughs> Physically." Oh wait, hold on. For I think the stream just. Crashed? Hold on. Oh shit. Uh, oh no wait, no, it's working now. It's just... Still up over here. Okay, yeah. I just need to refresh. I just saw it um chat. Okay, cool. Mm. Cool. Keep going. Does does anybody is anyone like bad in a real way? Is it is it is it just me? Uh I'm okay for the moment, I think. Um are you sh- are you sure? Or you're not just saying that. Uh no, I'm I'm okay, I guess. <laughs> Floating's okay. <laughs> oh, Luvon, you are not floating. You're completely unaffected because you were the only yeah, one. Yeah, I'm looking be- back though. Like, oh yeah. Should I go back real quick? <laughs> um, sorry, I'm just checking to see if I can cure levitation really fast. Um, but lesser restoration does not do that. You would need like a dispel magic. Yeah, which I do not have. Okay. Um 
All right, she's gonna um, say like, oh, ho- hold on to your butts, <laughs> and uh, uh, on her uh, her this dulcimer, and she's renamed renamed these strings to be a little bit nicer. So there's there's hope, uh, victory, uh, knowledge or learning, and then uh, uh, probably like friendship or something gross, um, like that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I guess, and uh, she is going to. Oh, man, I wonder if she could do this, like, <laughs> lightly thunder wave everyone back down to the ground around her. <laughs> mm. She uses it at a lower, uh, or thunder clap, even. Uh, make an arcana check for me. Okay, thank you. Sorry. <laughs> Ten. So you get the feeling like you think that you could get them like it, it'll basically be like a beach ball effect that as soon as they touch the ground, they'll kind of bounce back up again. It's the <laughs> idea that you get. All right. Well, she'll touch her own shoulder and go, ha, huh, feels wonderful. <laughs> and, and just go huh, and like, a, you know, a little uh, magic comes out of her finger and goes, ah, and she hears herself because she's about to pass out. Uh, Seventeen points. Nice. Uh, and then she will again sing a little ditty, though. Uh, and I uh, use. Um, she will give a uh, a uh, Luvon bardic inspiration as she sings, like, "Run, run as fast as you can. You can't catch Luvon. He's the he- hairy vampire. Uh, uh, good luck." <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Nice. Uh, you get one d eight on your for the next ten minutes. Very good. And move on. So there was a momentary pause to kind of see if he can help out the situation. I don't think any of these cats can really do anything about it. <laughs> yeah. But we are going to go the dragon this way. So basically, not a full swipe, but four lions kind of just swiping just the air uh, right by the dragon's face and then bolting. Provoke an attack of opportunity. Mmm. All right. He'll try and take a chomp at you with a 24 to hit. 24 would hit, but I'm going to roll a die. And it hit it. And it hits a duplicate. Nice. Very cool. Uh, let's see. Yep, it targets the duplicate instead. So one of the Luvans just instantly kind of like... Nice. As Luvon bolts with his newly found uh, 55 <laughs> feet of movement speed after some recalculations. Wow. <laughs> All right, where are you bolting to? Uh, still towards the orrery. Okay. At this point. Cool. All right, so that'll put you Do-do-do. using your movement too, or your uh, your dash as well. Um. I, you know what? Yeah, we'll spend a key point on that. So it'll absolutely be a dash. All right, that'll put you. So at, that is one ten. Put you at two twenty. So you are eighty, just eighty feet away. All right. And then Valka. Uh, let me roll a concentration check just in case I succeed it. I'm very far away. He has no reaction. Yeah, I did not. So the uh, all the stuff that was floating near him, that he made float at least, falls to the ground. Uh, and instead, he, um, he kind of like bangs on his hat a bit until it lets out like a little spore cloud as he casts Aura of Transference on himself. And this little gray cloud kind of forms around him. Um, anything else I can do? Um, nothing yet. 
I'll save my bonus action for now. And I'll pass turn. Alright, at the end of your turn, this dragon is going to... Let's see, is anyone next to him? No, because you're 60 feet away. Oh no, you haven't moved, right, uh, Velka? Nope. Yeah, you are a bit away. Alright, no, we're good. Uh, six killer. Okay. Um, I'm like 400 something feet away from this thing. From the orrery, you are 240 with the dragon pretty much in the way. Okay. Um, if I cast Misty Step, which is a teleportation spell that'll take me 30 feet into an unoccupied space, can I get around this dragon? Can yeah. I get to his other side? Uh, so let's see. So you can run 30 feet. That'll bring you at 90. Yep. Yep. Okay. So let me know if this works. I want to cast it, get on his side, and use that to super push myself. Like, jump off of him to get closer to it. Ooh. Okay. Okay. Super push. Super. If I can use an action to say that I super push myself off. I dig it. All right, yeah, 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 yeah. Make me an athletics check. Okay. Jump into my arms. Yep, baby roll. Uh, this is, oh, this is um, 16 plus. Oh. Mm -hmm. Six, 16 plus seven? Ooh, hot dang. Uh, can that get me a super, super freaking like, Olympics level... Uh, oh yeah, what does this Olympic level push look like? <laughs> okay, so this first salt of all, and pepper. <laughs> she casts Misty Step, which I can only assume is like she does the Naruto hand symbols <laughs> and just fucking poofs onto the other side of this shithead dragon man. She's gonna like... You know how you see like, uh, in the Olympics when they're gonna do the heavy uh, lift... And they get down so freaking low. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what she does. And then she just like pushes herself off like a rocket. Hell yeah. I will. I love that. That is excellent. I. Let's see. Yeah. And he doesn't. This dragon does not even seem to notice you as you just <laughs> ricochet <laughs> off of this creature as he is looking around and searching, trying to find the nearest target. <laughs> and it's still floating. So we will put you... Yeah, we'll sit, We'll call you at uh, 180 feet. So you only have another 120 feet to go. So an mm -hmm. extra 30 feet on top of what you would have gotten. I can't go so a little Luba. further because I'm so cool. That, oh, I'll I gave, you, that. I gave you an extra 30 feet. On top oh, of on top of the two. Yeah. Okay, thank you. <laughs> All uh, right, so, I yeah. got my plan. Yeah, so Luvon, you see 40 feet behind you is now a six killer who has Naruto <laughs> leap <laughs> and appeared behind you suddenly. And, all right. All right, and as one of Dragon Boy's legendary actions, we are, he's going to use a detect. He's going to make perception check. Ooh, hot garbage. Damn. All right, we're throwing that die right in die jail. <laughs> right in the dice jail. All right, and then on his turn, we have a wonderful Marimorn and a Valka. So this dragon yep. is going, you see this thing, it beats its wings, and you see this sort of, sort of glittering dust uh, sort of just wash off of this creature, and it opens a, his its mouth again. And you can see spilling from it is this just solar flare of light that lashes out at Valka and Marimorn. And I need you to make a deck saving throw. Five. Wait. Yeah, five. Fourteen. So unfortunately... Um... <clears throat> Neither of you make it, so you're going to take. Just rotating, like in space, like two little hot dogs at a 7 Eleven. Uh, a total of 30, <laughs> 30 damage. And Valka, what are the magic items that are on you? Oh boy, are there magic items on me. Um, do we count curios as magic items? Yes, yeah. 
Um, I have. Do you want me to tell you the number or all of them? Just all of them. Just list them for me. Uh, I have one curio of many spells. I have another curio of many spells. I have a curio of repeated spells. A curio of the arcane. Curio of cantrips. Um, and I have the staff of the ivory claw. All right, so that's six. How dare <laughs> use my own stuff against me. So the curio of uh, cantrips is immediately disintegrated. <gasps> Marimorn, what are the magic items that are on you? How dare <laughs> Okay, so I've got the um, dulcimer of my hands, I guess, right? Isn't that technically a magic item? The oh, yeah. The coolest. Definitely did blood, sweat, tears to get that. Uh, <laughs> uh, the Are all my musical instruments considered magical? Or I've got a focus for sure, but. um, I would say no. Yeah. It was within me. Got it. Got it. Okay. Uh, the other, the only other one then is my memento mori, which is my mm -hmm. small sort of Altoids tin of mortician's makeup that I would mm -hmm. use on. Uh... All right. But it also has properties, so I really hope I don't lose it. So your memento is destroyed. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. Oh. And his stellar, his uh, solar flare breath recharges. Ooh. How far away was was the dragon? Uh, so it's now uh, it's now sixty feet away from you, Valka. It is right on top of you, Marimorn. Perfect. First of all, that was a really hard palette to get. So, because uh, the dragon is within sixty feet of me, the uh, aura of transference can kick off. Meaning, uh, Marimor, since you're closer to me, you get 15 temporary hit points as this gray aura just, like, wafts away from Valka, smiling, because uh, he knew what he was doing, because he knew he wasn't going to dodge a damn thing, and wraps around you and invigorates you temporarily. Yeah, so you'll, instead of, yeah, take 15 damage off and then just basically erase those temp HP. <laughs> yeah. um, and then we're back to Marimor. Wait, so sorry, I don't take 30 damage anymore? I just so take... Just take 15. Just Cause... 15. Okay. Yeah. Skin's still splitting like a hot dog at 7-Eleven. <laughs> um, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I knew I couldn't dodge it, but I could give it to you. Uh... I don't know what accent was. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, he's taking your accent! <laughs> he's taking Valka's voice. It's like the little mermaid all over again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. Holy holy bejeez. She is pissed. Uh Marimorn is so angry. Uh yeah, she felt it just sort of like evaporate in her pocket and like she's like looking around. Um, how far away is the dragon from us now? It is literally right on top of you. It's right on top of us. <laughs> With the Falcon sixty feet behind you <laughs> and six killer and Luvon very far away. Yeah, um, she is, like, she's like, how dare you? Like, <laughs> she's, she's like, uh, starts, like, plucking her, uh, the, her other magic weapon still that she has, her uh, dulcimer. Uh, and she, uh, mm, yeah, she plucks knowledge and uh, starts, like, singing, um, welcome, welcome, welcome to the night. You will not win this fight. And then, like on the last one, like little string breaks, and then thwack, 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 goes and uh, hits uh, Simroth um, as she casts Lacerate, Ooh. and they must make a. Always when I need it, the page doesn't load. They have to make a Dex saving. Mm, they make make a saving throw, but I'm not sure. Just get your dice hot in your little hands, <laughs> in your in your great hands. Constitution saving throw. <laughs> Sorry. Con save. All right. Pretty good at those. Oop, let me throw it in my tray. <laughs> Nine. <laughs> All right, well, 
because I'm casting this at a higher level too. I'm just um. Sorry, it's a lot of dice. Should I just multiply by the first one or? I mean, it whatever. It's fine. If I have a, yeah. Okay, now nah, I'll just I'll do it. I'll do it this way. Sorry. I should have pulled up a dice roller. Well, you know, sometimes it's just the chunky feel. No, it's a tactile. Mm. Exactly. Tactile. Dactyl. Uh, twenty-seven <laughs> points of uh, uh, slashing damage. Okay. Uh, and they also gain one level of exhaustion. If that's something that a timeless creature can feel, honestly, not sure. Either mm-hmm. never or always. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it does. We can. Wow. Mm-hmm. All right. So Idiot. it's disadvantage on all checks. Idiot still gets tired, endless being. Yeah. <laughs> Man, ex- existence is pain. Yeah. <laughs> that doesn't well, change. Yeah. <laughs> um, right, turn over. <laughs> very cool. Uh, All right, so bad. <laughs> and with that, it's going to take a legendary action and try and smack you with its tail, Marimorn. Good luck. I'm like a flay. <laughs> that is an uh twenty eight to hit. Are you asking me if it hits or um? <laughs> uh, let's see. Where are my d eights? Yeah, I, it was either lacerate or turn myself ghost, and I clearly I'm about to pick the wrong one. <laughs> uh, and that is nine bludgeoning damage. Oh, sweet! Just passes out. <laughs> Goes limp in air. <laughs> All right. And Luvon. So, six killer, are you still intent on hitting the Ori? Yeah, I, I'm i here. I figure I'm going to just freaking bang the hell out of it. I have some spells lined up. I'm hoping to work. Sage, I would like to commit to some bullshit. I'm here for the bullshit. bullshit. So, we're going to preserve momentum as Luvon makes a wide turn and runs back around to see the speeding six killer coming towards him. Mm -hmm. Goes out, reaches his arms out, and goes into a corkscrew (gasps) to throw you further towards the orrery. As he continues running back towards the dragon. I love it. Make me an athletics check. Cool. Guy Fieri, come on. You know this is cool. (laughs) Guy Fieri thought it was cool too. So that would be plus. That is a 19. Wow. It goes according to plan. You. (laughs) (laughs) You. Huck six killer. Let's see with the nineteen, we'll say we'll you huck six killer up to the two forty mark. So six killer, you can get there with your movement and using your action to dash on your turn. Okay. And all the while, I am spending another key point to keep myself running. So I am spending the rest of my turn running back towards the dragon because there are some problems to deal with. All right, so that'll be 110, so 165 feet. So that'll, yeah, that'll move you up to the dragon. Okay. That's where we're at so far. Uh, It is going to use another legend. Actually, it's going to use its perception to see if it can see you running up. Um, I assume you are not doing this stealthily. Not at all. There are just three lions in pursuit. All right, so yeah, the you, pride. you see the dragon whips around and sees you just like gunning back, and it like gets down in a real low, almost sort of cat like position as it looks like it's ready to pounce on you. And that brings, Very good. brings us to Valka. You see 60 feet in front of you is an unconscious Marmorn floating in the air. Hmm. Yeah, unfortunately, I can't do anything for that. <laughs> I'm not a healer. That sounds like a you, personal issue. <laughs> you, you got the best heals that I can give. 
Uh, so Valka is going to produce that good old trusty selenite rod and cock it back like a Glock and fire off a monochromatic ray at his best friend. Ugh. Uh, uh, thir- uh, 14? That will not do it. Alright, he's going to use his spontaneous uh, manifest- uh, sudden manifestation to just very quickly try to fire off another one of those. That's a natural 20. Beep, 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 beep. Beep, 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 beep. Uh, um, Bardic Inspiration doesn't add damage, right? Correct. Alright, this is force damage. So that's going to be five. Uh, eight. Six. No, 14. Cool, cool, cool. 14 force damage. Can I move when I'm levitating at all? Um, no. Not unless you have anything okay. to push off of. No. Yeah, he's feeling that way. Anyway. Or a lasso. <laughs> or a lasso. You could lasso. Try to lasso a dragon. <laughs> <laughs> or the buildings around you and use them to pull yourself forward. Yeah, I don't think he's got that in him. And six killer. Now you are only 60 feet away, so with a movement and using your action to dash, you can get up there, or if there's anything else that you would like to do in your turn. Okay. So I actually realized what I wanted to do, and now I wish I had done it before, but anyway. I would like to cast Hunter's Mark and Bane on... Well, no, because it's an inanimate object, so it's not even going to work, is it? I think both of those are concentration anyway, so you can only have one concentration spell going at a time. Um, There'll be oh, like no, a... one's, one's divination. But divination doesn't work here, right? Um, yeah, for one. Um, but next yeah. to the spell somewhere, there'll be like a little C and like a triangle that'll tell you that it's, it requires oh, it's still concentration. concentration. Oh, okay. Yeah, you're right, you're right. Um, well, it sells up to three, so can I do it on an inanimate object? <laughs> Uh, Bane? Yeah. I'm gonna tell that's not gonna do anything. It's not gonna do anything? All right. it's, it's not gonna have anything, any rolls to subtract from. Okay. But, um, I mean, yeah, you could do it on the dragon, try to do it on the dragon, but... I could try and do it on the dragon, but he's like a legendary thing, so I just, I don't know. I could just, you're right, you use my action and my dash, well, I get two actions. You just get one action. If you use your action to attack, you can make two attacks, though. Oh, okay. Never mind. Um... Yeah, I'll just get there then. Alright. <laughs> yeah, about this thing. As you get as you draw closer to it, you feel the sort of innate power that is sort of crackling within uh this construct as you see these huge sort of uh sort of planetoid bodies that are on these arms are that are swirling about and you see them like with this energy that uh sort of fizzles and, and crackles between them. Is it enough energy to make me stop gravitating? No. Oh, okay. That's fine. The energy very much matches the color palette of this dragon. Oh. That was working on it, so. Hmm. Uh, and then it is my boy's turn. All right. My boy. All right, Luvon, you heard, Sage. <laughs> it's your boy's turn. It's my yeah, boy's man. turn. Uh... Yeah, it is poised and ready to pounce at Luvon, so it is going to, first and foremost, uh, as you are within the within the proximity of this creature, uh, you see its eyes begin to focus on you, and you see just into the darkest corners of the universe, and the... Uh, uh, what Agfa had said to you earlier in the sphere of darkness, those words begin to tremble within the back of your mind as it uses its aura. So I need you to make a wisdom saving throw for me. I do not like this. Guy Fieri didn't either. That is a 13. 
that unfortunately is not going to do it. And so you are frightened. Uh, do and ooh, and since you failed it by five or more, you are under the effect of a confusion spell. Ooh. Uh, oh. And you will be able to make can, you'll be able to make a save at the end of each of your turns. Uh, and then it's gonna give you a smack with its claws. Uh, that's not gonna hit. That will hit. That is 26. Let's see something real quick. And that hits a duplicate. Nice. Very cool. You have two left? Yes. Nice. And I think this is a good place to leave it with. A confused uh, Luvon, an unconscious Maramorn, six killer ready to bash this Ori, and a Velka fighting his best friend. Mm. And we will be here next week, friends, but we will be doing it an hour later so that we can accommodate for the Gen Pen, the Gen Von four power <laughs> hour, sh four hour power show. <laughs> so you will be able to find us next week. Uh, let me pull my calendar here. Five seven. Yes. Yes. At at seven p.m. Pacific time, ten p.m. Eastern. Right. And I have been your storyteller, Sage, who's almost killed a character in, the, in this first episode. So close. So close. Not close. yet. Not yet. <laughs> Four points away. <laughs> <laughs> Currently, might be. Yeah. Uh, I have been the Willy Boo, always at the Willy Boo, usually fun posting online and sometimes having a good time. Uh, and yes, this has been a fantastic opening to season three. So uh, let's let's finish this fight with all of us standing up, please. Yes, yes, please. Uh, I'm Rihanna. I'm at DIY Ferret on like everything. Um, I would like to at least wait till the finale for one and or all of us to die. So if we could just maybe do that, that would be cool. Um, that's all I got. See you next week. Uh, I'm Matt. I play Valka, who's fighting his previously one and only friend. You can find me on Twitter at KentaroTPC uh, and my podcast, The Crow's Codex, uh, which has been renamed from The Curse of Lords, is now going to be The Curse of Lords and more stuff. You can find that on Twitter at The Crowdex. Um, and <laughs> recently, I did a one shot uh, with the folks over at Growed Up Geek, um, a little spooky uh, one shot. Called the Thorn and Broom. You can find that on their Twitch channel, the VODs up. Give it a look. They're they're a good group of kids. I say kids, but they're all adults like me. Uh, that's it. Hey, and thank you. I've been Jen Vaughn, and you can find me at the Genya anywhere online or my comics narrative design work at HunterVaultStudios.com. Uh, and yes, as Sage said, thank you. Uh, the first Friday of every month, I host a show over at Roll20 app called Fiasco Fridays, where I uh, don't really, I mean, I just host, but I also play because everyone's a player. Uh, it's a game of uh, positive and negative outcomes and setting the scenes, and we'll be playing Alien Invasion uh, mm. next week with uh, Robin uh, Warren of Geek Girl Strong, Jordan Shively of Void Merch slash Hottest Singles on Twitter, and uh, Isabella Price. Uh, from uh, a multitude of things, actually. Too many to count, but uh, uh, a local uh, horror movie host in Seattle as well. So hopefully I can see you then at 5 p.m. at uh, Roll20 app, and then just, like, follow me as the Roll20 app will, like, jump over, will raid this stream. It'll be great. Heck yeah. We'll get you a Red Bull. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. I'll do coffee. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not I'm not an adventure named Bear Girls Who Drinks Pee. Like that's what Red Bull <laughs> says to me. 
<laughs> famous <laughs> piss oh, drinker. Man. <laughs> For <He's> real. So <laughs> gross. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fantastic. And of course, if you haven't checked it out, check out the Venture Maidens Kickstarter. We're so close to 100,000. We're about like 15K away, at which point we will unlock a level 1 through 20 adventure um, that you can get if you uh, order the zine. It'll be automatically upgraded to the whole full complete 1 through 20 module, which is super cool. We have some cool cats right here on this stream who are one of the writers, so you should totally support it. <laughs> um, yes, yeah, so that is super cool. Um, next week, next Wednesday, we have, we'll be back with uh, Rhyme of the Frost Maiden at 7 p.m. on Wednesday. And that's pretty much it. And you know what you all should do until next time, friends? Feed away!